again at the James Museum of Western and Wildlife Art in St. Petersburg, Florida, and another wonderful Earl Biss painting here. This is Winter Sunrise Circle of the Big Sky People. Come up close here. This is another incredibly spiritual, expressive, emotional painting. Earl talked about moving paint around. Look at all the different paint applications. We've obviously got some brushwork here. This has just been flung across the canvas. We've got all sort of um, application techniques. This is different over here with a heavier impasto. Uh, all of these um, dots of paint there are obviously when he was just flinging uh, the brush against the canvas. Uh, again, there are great videos on YouTube if you search Earl Biss from Lisa Gerstner. I've seen him painting with one brush in each hand simultaneously. It's the most extraordinary thing uh, you've ever seen. Again, a very represent, representational uh, subject matter of his. These are uh, Crow Indians. Earl was a Crow. Absoluka is the uh, way you say that best as I can in their native language. Again, I wonder though what Earl was um, connected to when he was painting this picture. Again, Earl didn't work off of sketches or photographs. He got himself into a moment and connected to his uh, the Crow ancestors, the Crow past, the Crow future, and he would always say the, uh, the, the Crow that were uh, channeling through him did the painting, not uh, Earl himself. And uh, Lisa Gerstner, who has um, done the Earl Biss biography, A Spirit Who Walks Among His People, and is uh, doing the documentary, she was in the room with Earl painting, and uh, she said she could feel the presence of hundreds of crows, and they came through Earl onto the canvas. Um, it's a remarkable and almost goofy thing to say until you stand in front of one of these pictures, and I am not a religious person, I am not a spiritual person, but I believe Earl Biss was able to connect to different places and different realms and the past and the future, and all of that came through him onto the canvas. I've never seen anyone paint atmosphere like this. Uh, it, it's almost like he captures, is this, is it snow? Is it, is it pollen? Are these spirits? Is, are, you know, this, um, sort of ephemeral quality of the atmosphere. Again, moving paint around. These are the, the splotches that Earl would have come down here uh, with a, a, a paintbrush and worked over. Uh, and as you look at this, you, you get a sense of uh, the activity of it, the motion of it, how engaged Earl was in this piece. This is not something that you, uh, you do an underdrawing to and then you you kind of work on this area and you put it aside for uh, a couple of days and then you work on that area and you, you, know, you mix these paints. The way Earl worked, <laughs> you have these big uh, basement studios, kind of uh, messy dungeon-like spaces and all his paints were around and he'd just look, and do that, and then maybe wipe it off. And then he'd throw some paint over here and it all came together because he was in the moment. He didn't know exactly what he was going to paint. He didn't know exactly how it was going to come out. And don't fool yourself into thinking that means he wasn't talented or he wasn't careful or he didn't care or this was luck. This was an artist of incredible talent, incredible skill, incredible training uh, at the height of his powers here in the uh, mid-1980s connecting to a spirituality that was finely tuned and allowing those spiritual influences, those futures, those past, uh, those other crow ancestors of him to work through him and come onto the canvas. And the last thing I want to show you here, which I really love, all of these figures have their back to the viewer, except that one. Look at that face. <clears throat> obviously not um, very detailed, not incredibly representational, but so much can be read into that face 
Is it a face of warning? Is it a face of welcoming? What does that rider want to communicate? Come with us or stay away? Hard to know. This is a very romantic image in a sense, the Plains Indians and the freedom uh, and you know this ability to be out under the this kind of a sky but it's also incredibly cold you know this is a hard lifestyle and you know these are people who had genocide put upon them by the u.s government and uh western civilization the crow people at one point were uh down in total numbers to uh, just a few hundred that is back up now to over a thousand but nowhere near what their uh, peak population was. So are these figures welcoming you or are they warning you? If you had the chance to join them and walk into this painting with Earl and with his crow ancestors, would you go? Thinking about how uh, romantic this idea of uh, living on the plains and subsistence and being with the horses and the wildlife and the animal, or would you stay knowing that these people, if they're Earl's ancestors, were at one point hunted down by the U.S. government in an attempt to exterminate them. These people were the victims of a genocide. So while we look at this beautiful painting and these wonderful colors and this expression, that's the backdrop. The backdrop here is genocide. And again, Earl, I think, is, is trying to tell us that, hey, we were here, my people, and maybe even me, Earl Biss, because he believes he lived many lives previous and will live many lives in the future. These people were here long before the white man will be here uh, long after their attempts to exterminate us are done. And this figure right here is asking, do you want to come along or do you want to stay? Easy to get lost in this great uh, painterly uh, work here of, of the way Earl can uh, move paint around and then you get into the figures and you really start asking yourself uh, some very difficult questions about indigenous people uh, in the Americas. And then, you know, for me, uh, being a European descendant of, of what my ancestors did to these people, a great, great painting by the incomparable Earl Biss.